What's up? I'm Tyler Duffus, and this is Mix Worship. In this video, I want to tell you about some things involving Slate Trigger 2 and how to set up uh, your Mix Worship drum samples in Slate Trigger 2. So, uh, we're going to start out with uh, going to our Trigger 2 plugin, and we're going to go to Settings. And we're going to select our base directory. So if you haven't, if you've just got Slate Trigger 2 and this is the first time you're ever using it, you have to set a specific folder for where all of your samples are going to go. And that's where Trigger 2 knows to look. So for me, it's in my documents and I've got drum samples here and a bunch of incarnations of the samples that we have up for sale on the mixworship.com website. So we're going to go ahead and select that. And as a quick note on that, anytime you are dropping a, a new sample into this folder, like in Finder, if, you've got, if you have a Pro Tools session currently pulled up, you have to close that session and reopen it in order for Slate Trigger 2 to actually see that you put a new sample into that folder. So now that we've got our uh, base directory set up, if anytime you get uh, any of the premium plugin uh, licenses, you've got a insert the license folder into, like for me, I keep my license folder in uh, the drum samples folder, or I keep my licenses in the drum samples folder. So you have to make sure you set that up. And then once you go to browser, here you can drag and drop uh, however many different TCI files. So TCI files are, are slate trigger two files, trigger instrument files trigger instrument files. You can also drop in just regular dot waves. So that's how you load into the into the sample player, I guess you'd call it. I'm not sure what they call it. That's what I want to call it. Um, so then if we look at our mixer, you've got panning, you've got tuning, so you can kind of adjust to taste if you want something, if you want something to be a little bit more uh, tubby, you can drop the tune way down or, or bring it up. Then you've got a solo and a uh, mute function as well as a phase function. So if we come over here to our snare drum, so you want to make sure that you check your phase uh, with your snare trigger channel and your snare dry channel if you're going to do, if you're going to blend trigger and a dry channel together. So can do that by bringing it, bringing your mix down to like 50%. And when it's out of phase, you'll kind of lose some low mids and it'll get kind of flammy. Um, when things are in proper phase, they'll, they should have just a little bit more punch. And it can be subtle, but in the mix, the more things you add in, it makes a difference. So now that we know that's in phase, I've got two different samples going, so I want to make sure these are both in phase together. So I like that there. Yeah, I like that there. I think it was up from like here. So uh, that's for phasing. And then you can also save presets, which is pretty sweet. Um, when you save with, uh, with like the built-in Pro Tools preset, it can be kind of funny sometimes. Uh, but at any rate, so that is checking phase. And then we come over here and we've got our curves and our curves are uh, attack, sustain, release. So this is like time-based. Like 
so you can kind of adjust the envelope of, of the sample. And then you've also got dynamics, velocity, range minimum, and range maximum. So if you've got something that's, like if you've got a drummer who's kind of inconsistent and you want to just like flatten it out, you can just take these guys all the way up. So you can see even these little ghost notes. So uh, those are all things at your disposal to shape your sound how you want it to. And then up here, well, not you. Up here, you've got a gate coming on the way in to, to clean up bleed if you want, as well as low cut and high cut also to clean up bleed. So that way you get, you can tighten up what trigger is looking for, for program material to actually trigger off of. So then over here, uh, you've got sensitivity, re-trigger, and detail. And these just kind of uh, help control pretty much the, threshold, the thresholds at which things are being triggered. Um, so sensitivity is great for, like, you can go higher up for ghost notes and it's a little bit more sensitive. Um, the higher the sensitivity, I recommend using suppress, but if you're using this as like a, like a live broadcast mix kind of a thing, suppress adds extra latency that it, it's, it makes your computer work harder than, than you really need it to. Um, but sensitivity, I mean, they, the manual says 50 is a great starting point. I usually live somewhere around like 60. For re-trigger, re-trigger basically just makes it to where if, for instance, with like kick drum for us, sometimes our, our younger drummers will have like accidental double taps, re-trigger uh, can help tidy that up. So that it doesn't sound flappy, you don't have extra, extra triggers that don't need to be there. And then detail is basically your threshold for what's actually going to get triggered. So bringing up the sensitivity, we can get these snare bleed hits if we wanted, or if it was a snare drum, uh, you could hone in and, and even get some extra trigger happening for ghost notes and stuff. I like to do a blend of the trigger and the direct mic just because I feel like to me that sounds more natural and that's what works for me. So at any rate, uh, the other sweet feature of this is the suppress function and this is great if you're doing a mix down, like I say, if you're doing using this as like a broadcast template kind of a thing. I wouldn't necessarily use the suppress function because it, it can get a little taxing on the system. Um, but basically to do a, to, to use the suppress function, you would actually send your kick drum out to an aux. So for instance, we're gonna be set up on bus one and two. We're gonna pan this all the way to the left because it's the left channel that actually is the triggers, uh, what's being triggered. And then we've got our snare direct mic and we've got that going out to bus one and two and that's going out to the right side. And that's what's gonna feed the suppression side chain. So, and you can hear that latency. But these red guys are showing the snare, snare hits that are coming through. And this is making it to where we can get, if, if we wanted to go way down on detail and really get uh, a lot of like ghost notes, for instance, with snare drum, you can feed all of the toms to that right channel and then have the snare go into the left channel and really tidy things up so you can hone in on just that snare drum. So that's a neat function as well. So at any rate, I hope that this was helpful. Be sure to like and subscribe, hit that little notification icon guy, and check out mixworship.com for these drum samples as well as this mix template and lots of other great things. So thank you so much, have a good day.